Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white Colossus Hammer combo deck that's pretty reminiscent of the Cheerios deck we've covered a while back, as we're playing both with Pure Seal Paladin and SRAM Senior Edificer, which draws a card whenever we play an equipment, alongside a bunch of zero mana equipment to help us draw a ton of cards. But the difference here is that we've also added Colossus Hammer to the deck, a 1 mana equipment that gives the equipped creature plus 10 plus 10 and loses flying, but the equip cost is a whopping 8 mana, which is not easy to get to in this deck, with only 18 lands and 4 mox opals. So instead we're trying to cheat on the equip cost, which we can do of course with Pure Steel Paladin, which if we have Metalcraft, meaning if we have 3 or more artifacts in play, Equipment we control can be equipped for 0 mana, so that's one way of cheating on the equip cost. Then the second method involves Sigarda's Aid, a 1 mana enchantment that says we can cast aura and equipment spells as though they had flash so we can play them at instant speed. And then whenever an equipment enters a battlefield under our control, we can attach it to target creature we control so we don't have to pay the equip cost and we can just equip it for free. And then the third method involves Core Outfitter, which is a 2 mana 2-2 two -two creature that when it enters a battlefield lets us attach target equipment we control to target creature we control. So that's another way of cheating on the equip cost. So we have a lot of ways of equipping the Colossus Hammer for free, but we also have a lot of ways of finding the Colossus Hammer in the first place. Between SRAM and Pure Steel Paladin drawing us extra cards when playing Zero Man Equipment, we get to see a lot of new cards. But we also have four copies of Steel Shaper's Gift, which is a one mana sorcery that lets us search our library for any equipment card, reveal it and put it into our hand. And we also have two copies of Open the Armory, which in this deck is just a more expensive Steel Shaper's Gift, but just adds even more consistency to the deck. And with these six different sorceries, not only can we find the Colossus Hammer if we want to, but we can also find the different zero man equipment if we just want to draw more cards with Pure Steel Paladin or SRAM, or even some of these utility artifacts. We've got one copy of Flare Husk, which is a one man equipment with a living weapon, meaning that it enters a battlefield attached to a 0 0 black germ creature token and it gets plus one plus one, so it turns into a 1 1 germ token. And the reason we have Flare Husk in the deck is that sometimes you'll have opening hands with plenty of Steel Shaper's Gifts, Sigardos Aids, Colossus Hammers, but you just need a creature to equip the Colossus hammer onto and then you can simply use your steel shaper's gift or open the armory to search up a flare husk which comes with a creature attached so you can just load all those equipment onto your germ token and go to town so yeah that's the basic gist of the deck so let me go over all the different cards that i haven't covered at zero man of course we've got the full play set of mox opal since we're playing a bunch of these cheap artifacts and we're trying to combo as fast as possible mox opal can help us out there adding one man of any color as long as we have metal craft then we've got our four copies of colossus hammer which sometimes we want to keep in hand so we can play our cigaros eight first other times we have a pure steel paladin or a sram and we just want to draw cards and of course with the pure steel paladin if we hit metal craft we can equip it for free then taking a look at the other equipment We've got one copy of Flare Husk, which we've mentioned as a tutor target with a living weapon. We've got our Spider Silk Net, giving the equipped creature plus O plus 2 and reach, so can be useful against flying creatures. And then we've got two copies of Cathar's Shield and two copies of a Quarter Shield, which are functionally the same, giving the equipped creature plus O plus 3 and Vigilance, just uh, playing two different copies, so we can dodge effects like Maelstrom Pulse, for example. And our final equipment is Bonesaw, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus O, so it can actually increase your clock. Then we've got our six sorceries to search up our equipment. And then in the one drop slot, we also have a full play set of Core Duelist, one mana for a 1 1. And as long as Core Duelist is equipped, it has double strike. So putting a Colossus Hammer onto a Core Duelist can lead to a turn 3 win. Simply go turn 1 Core Duelist, turn 2 Sigardas Aid into Colossus Hammer. We've got a 11 11 with double strike, which can kill the opponent in one attack. So that can lead to those very explosive starts. Then at 2 mana, we've got our four copies of SRAM and our four copies of Pure Steel Paladin. Pure Steel Paladin is usually the better one, since besides drawing extra cards with equipment, it also lets us equip for free, which is a big part of the deck. And we can also have multiple copies of Pure Steel Paladin in play, whereas SRAM is legendary. But SRAM lets us draw a card whenever we cast an equipment, whereas with Pure Steel Paladin, the equipment has to enter the battlefield. So if we're playing against counter spells, the ability on SRAM is slightly better. And then finally, we've got our two copies of Core Outfitter and the full playset of Sigardas Aid. And we also can't overlook the fact that we can play our equipment at instant speed. So we can maybe attack with multiple creatures, the opponent blocks, and then we can attach the Colossus Hammer at instant speed to the one unblocked creature to maybe get in for lethal damage. And it also allows fun things with Ink Moth Nexus. As we move on to the mana base here, Ink Moth Nexus, a land that can turn into a 1-1 Blink Moth artifact creature with flying and infect until end of turn. 
and that means that we can also one hit KO the opponent if we attach a Colossus Hammer onto the Ink Moth Nexus. Of course, Colossus Hammer makes the Ink Moth lose flying, but we can attack first if the opponent doesn't have any flyers. Ink Moth goes unblocked, and then we can flash in the Colossus Hammer with Sigardos 8 attached it to the Ink Moth Nexus and deal 11 infect damage, which is enough to win the game. And then the rest of our mana base, we've got four copies of Silent Clearing. We can replace this with any of the White Horizon lands, either Horizon Canopy or Sunbaked Canyon, as a way to draw cards in late game if we're flooding out, and then a bunch of basic planes. And then moving on to the sideboard, we've got two copies of Tormod Script, Graveyard Hate, and that's also an artifact, so helps with the Metalcraft for Mox Opal and Pure Steel Paladin. We've got a Graft Digger's Cage, which functions as both Graveyard Hate, as well as shutting down combos like the Neo Brand deck, and shutting down cards like uh, Collected Company and Court of Calling. Then we've got two copies of Burnt on Forge Tender, which has protection from red, so shines against the Lightning Bolt decks, both uh, helping us have a creature that we can equip safely that doesn't die to a Lightning Bolt, as well as maybe protecting our face from a lethal burn spell. Then we've got two copies of Faith Shield, which we can also use to protect our combo, can either save a creature or one of our equipment from a removal spell, as well as maybe making our creature unblockable if we give it the right protection. And then we've got two copies of Fragmentize to take out an artifact or enchantment with Convert Mana Cost 4 or less. Can maybe take out a Pesky and Snaring Bridge that can prevent us from attacking. And then we've got the full four copies of Path of Exile if we need some creature removal. And finally two copies of Rest in Peace as more Graveyard Hate. So that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And looking at our opening hand, we've got a lot of the pieces we need. All we're missing is a way of equipping the Hammer for free. We've got Ink Moth Nexus as a creature that can potentially one-hit KO the opponent. Sir Hand's got quite a bit of potential. So do we keep this? I think I do. It doesn't take much to turn on this hand. Even a SRAM to draw more cards is a pretty decent draw here. As we face a turn 1 Soulscar Mage, so probably the Mono Red Prowess deck. Just a Plains to draw. So I think I gift. What do we gift for? Could be a flare husk as just a creature. Could be one of the zero man equipment as something cheap we can play after a SRAM or a pure steel. I guess I'm probably leaning Cathar Shield here as something I can maybe equip right away onto a pure steel paladin to get it out of bolt range. Opponent with a turn two looting. So they're probably playing Arclight Phoenix as well. Not all the versions play with Arclight Phoenix, some just play Battle Reveler instead or just a mix of Phoenix and Reveler. There's a lot of different builds of this mono red deck. We see Final of Promise and a Monastery Swiss Spear. So two prowess creatures in play already. This is also going to be a pretty rough matchup with our opponent having a lot of burn spells to potentially kill our creatures. All right, there's a pure steel. So I can go pure steel into Cathar's shield, draw a card. If I find another zero man equipment, then I can also turn on the Mox Opal and play Colossus Hammer and equip Colossus Hammer right away, which would be a game winner. If I don't find a zero man equipment, then I'm in trouble, because then the Pure Steel is just going to have two toughness, they can kill it, and um, I won't have made a ton of progress. So it might be worth it to just gift for another zero man equipment instead, and wait a turn on playing the Pure Steel, hope they don't keep up a Lightning Bolt next turn. And then what do I search up? Probably a Bone Saw this time. And then I guess I'll play Ink Moth instead of Planes, and say go. Not a Swiss Spear, so the opponent is definitely tempted to just fire off any instant or sorcery during their turn. But they might be holding on to a Lightning Bolt here. Alright, never mind, light up the stage, second main phase, of course they couldn't play that first. So let's hope they end up uh, tapped out here. Finds two cards, finds a Looting and Lava Spike, but no third land. Alright, we could also just be dead next turn, so... Step one, play Pure Steel Paladin. There's also a chance we can just win right now by equipping the Ink Moth Nexus with Colossus Hammer. Start by playing all the free equipment. Find another Cathar Shield. So what I need to find is another Mox Opal. Because then I can both activate the Ink Moth and equip it with the Colossus Hammer. So we'll play the Mox Opal. And then play... Colossus Hammer. And find a Sigardos 8, that's not quite what we need. So we'll just play the other Colossus Hammer here and then make a giant Pure Steel Paladin. So 
So we've got a giant pure steel, but our opponent has a lot of creatures that can block. We're at 14, so who knows how this will go. At least they won't be able to remove the pure steel paladin, but they can remove us from the game by dealing lethal damage. And we see double mana morphos triggering prowess a bunch of times. They still have that lava spike we know about exiled with the light up the stage and a faithless looting, so yeah, we could be dead here. We were one Mox Opal away from winning last turn, because then we could have attacked with a lethal Ink Moth Nexus. Small chance that if I just played a pure seal on turn two, we would have won if our opponent didn't have a removal spell lined up. But uh, if they did have it, then it would have been pretty difficult to win. So I think it was worth waiting there. So we're taking three down to 11. They've got a bunch of five powered creatures that can get through, so we're technically at one, but they also discarded an Arclight Phoenix that can now come back from the graveyard, so we're just dead. Alright, so we were pretty close to comboing the opponents, just not quite fast enough. Alright, on to game two here, where we do get to bring in some useful cards out of the sideboard. Of course, Burnt and Forge Tender being the best one. Then Faith Shield is definitely a consideration, so is Path Exile. So a lot of cards to potentially bring in. Of course, we don't want to dilute the deck too much by over sideboarding, but uh, let's take a closer look. So these eight cards could all conceivably make the deck. What are we considering taking out? Open the Armory can usually go. We can shave the Core Outfitters. Then we can shave some of the artifacts and equipment here. Usually when taking out some of the equipment, I like shaving on Mox Opal since that loses a bit of effectiveness, even though this is a fast matchup. It does slow down after sideboard once we introduce a bit more interaction, and then can probably take out some of the easier mana equipment. I think I want to keep the nuts since they have Arclight Phoenix. Uh, probably the Bone Saw times two since the additional toughness is pretty relevant against burn spells to save our creatures. So yeah, we're down to 60, so taking out two Open Armory, two Outfitters, two Mox Opals and two Bone Saws. So we made our SRAM and Pure Seal a little bit worse, but now we can kill some early creatures from the opponent to buy more time. The Forge Tender is great, and the Faith Shield can also save a creature from removal, so our creatures got a little bit more resilient. So yeah, I think we'll uh, try this, and we'll be on the play. And how about this hand? So we've got two of the two mana creatures, some equipment, a Burton. So yeah, this seems like a pretty good hand that I'll definitely keep. Don't have the double white for the Pure Steel, that's one of the issues with Ink Moth. Otherwise, I would run even more, but still a very solid hand here. And then turn two, I could play Sram into a Bone Saw. I could wait on the Bone Saw on the off chance that we can play Pure Steel first as well. And the Burnt and Forge Tender could also save one of our two mana creatures here from a Burn spell. It's going to be a turn one Soulscar Mage. And the Core Duelists. So what's our play? Do we just SRAM into a Bone Saw here? Or do I play it slow and wait on playing the Bone Saw? I think I'm okay going SRAM into Bone Saw here. Find a shield. I'll run that out too. And a Path Exile has more interaction. Alright, I'll keep the Forge Thunder on defense so it can block the Soulscar Mage. I kind of expect SRAM to die here, as we see Lava Dart on SRAM, and thanks to the Soulscar's ability, shrinks down permanently into a 1-1, and a Gut Shot as well to take care of it, that's fine. Could protect with the Forge Tender, I think I'd rather hang on to the Forge Tender as a good blocker, and it's also more important to protect the Pure Steel Paladin, since that one lets us equip the Hammer for free, and protection from red means we can safely block here. Alright, untap, find a silent clearing. Alright, so play pure steel into Colossus Hammer. And then I might use the Forge Tender to protect the pure steel from removal spell here, since then we can make sure to equip the Colossus Hammer. And there we see Lightning Bolts, so pure steel is saved. And a Colossus Hammer enters the battlefield, draws us a card, and we can start equipping. And our opponent's probably not beating this start. 
Now they can still shrink down a pure steel paladin with the soul scar mage. So it might not stay enormous forever, but uh, it's gonna take a lot of resources to do so. Faith shield. So I can also name red here, give pure steel protection from red to get in for 13. I can animate ink moth nexus, put the colossus hammer onto it, but then they could lava dart forcing me to faith shield so then things get a little bit messy so i think the place probably just to attack with the pure seal paladin here and then play some more creatures maybe keep up the faith shield so let's do that here attack for 13 and if they take the first hit then next turn i can go for the lethal faith shield if i want to opponent takes it down to five play force tender and i guess i'll just keep up faith shield to play it extra safe but we should have it next turn could have also moved all the equipment onto the Forge Tender and have an enormous protection from red creature. Don't think it matters, opponent's pretty dead. Alright, sweet, so we drew our sideboard cards and they were pretty important. Any changes for game 3? I think I'm still happy with our sideboard plan for the most part. And yeah, drawing the Forge Tender in our opening hand again definitely makes things easier, so we'll keep. Turn 1 Fiery Islet into a Soulscar Mage. We'll just play the Forge Tender for now. And then we're waiting to draw into a Colossus Hammer or a way to find Colossus Hammer to go alongside the Sigarda's Aid. Also playing the Aid before playing SRAM could be worth it because then I can still play my uh, second equipment in response to removal spell on SRAM after playing the first equipment to still draw an extra card. Still blocking the prowess creature here. So I think my play is just going to be play Sigarda's Aid and then say go. We're not in a hurry. And then we can extract maximum value out of SRAM. Because I don't want to be forced to sacrifice a Forge Tender to save SRAM. And this way we get to draw even more cards next turn. And there we see a Swiss Spear. Into another Swiss Spear. So they can hit us for two. I could have flashed in the Bone Saw to kill the Soul Scar Mage. But again, I would rather just draw more cards with SRAM. Faith Shield is good uh, insurance as well. So we'll play SRAM. If we draw the hammer, then we could do some serious damage right now. And I'll equip the Forge Tender with the Bone Saw. Play another one. Find a backup SRAM. And then I guess we'll just say go. I could attack for three. Probably better to keep the Forge Tender on defense. And then I still have a Flare Husk. I can play it in some speed. Or I can just uh, keep up the shield. Lightning Bolt on SRAM. I guess I'll flash in the Flare Husk to draw a card right now. And put it onto the Forge Tender. So we've got a 4-2 protection from red. And another Soul Scar Mage. No attacks for now. Alright, Spider Silk Nuts, so we'll go Stram into Nuts. And this one we'll put onto Stram here. So he doesn't die to a lightning bolt. Just a planes a draw. Alright, so we will eventually need to draw something, at least uh, vigilance equipment to put onto Forge Tender so it can start attacking would be nice. And no real point in playing out the second Sigarda's aid, so we'll probably just pass the turn here. This is gonna be the first mana morphos. Opponents might force the issue here, trying to get in with as many prowess creatures as possible. And burn us out a lightning bolt upstairs. And a light up the stage to find some more action. Opponent finds a land and another Manamorphose, which they can't cast right now. Attacks with everyone. Alright, let's do some blocking. Can't even kill any of the opponent's creatures here. And I think I'm okay just using the Faith Shields to prevent for damage by giving Strong Protection from Red here. So we're down to 7. And there's a Steel Shaper's Gift, so that should do it here. Gift for the hammer, play hammer. And attach it onto the Forge Tender. Alright, sweet, so we managed to beat Mother Red Prowess, mostly thanks to our sideboarded Forge Tenders. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. 
And yeah, the sand seems reasonable. We're missing a way of equipping the Colossus Hammer for free, but we already have the Core Duelists and even an Ink Moth Nexus as reasonable targets. So the sand is hoping to find a Pure Steel Paladin, is hoping to find a Sigarda's Aid or even a Core Outfitter. Our hand is a bit land heavy and we don't have any of the Horizon lands, so we could flood out. But hopefully we just find one of our missing combo pieces and get the uh, turn 3 or turn 4 kill. Don't think we'll be able to set up a turn 2 kill here, since we don't actually have the Colossus Hammer in hand. If we were to top deck a Sigarda's Aid facing turn 1 Swamp, and go. Also gotta watch out for Fatal Push of course, and another Ink Moth to draw. Alright, I think we'll just attack and then probably steal Shaper's Gift for Colossus Hammer, keep it in hand for now. And then maybe start beating down with Ink Moth Nexus as well to get a bit of impact damage in as an alternate win condition. So I'll send for one. And usually we want to keep the equipment in hand until we draw a SRAM or a Pure Steel Paladin so we can cantrip with them. But I'm probably going to want at least one Colossus Hammer in hand. So let's search it up. Alternatively, I could have searched up something like a Bone Saw which of course I can just attach to the Cordulus to get in for 4 damage, giving it plus 1 plus 1 and then double strike. But uh, I don't think that's usually how we're going to win the game. Opponent on blue-black, still no plays. Alright, there's Ram, so now I think I'm okay playing some of the equipment. So we'll start by playing Sram himself. Cathar Shield draws a card. And they're going to use a Fatal Push on Sram now that they get the chance, fair enough. So if this were a Pure Steel Paladin, then we wouldn't have drawn any cards, is important to point out. And then I'll just attack for one and still keep the equipment in hand. Don't want to play out the Colossus Hammer since if we draw a Sigarda's Aid, we want to still be able to play it afterwards. There's a Flooded Strand. Alright, so we'll just keep shipping in there with the core duelists until we find one of our combo pieces, another core duelist. So I guess we're okay attacking with the Ink Moth as well. And it's gonna be a fatal push on the core duelist. And maybe one infect damage coming through. I'll play another duelist and a second Ink Moth. Opponent gets Hallowed Fountain, so they're on Esper. And looks like they have a spell stutter sprite to counter the duelist, that's too bad. Alright. So maybe some fairies in there too. And can also block Ink Moth, so that was a pretty good play for the opponent. Still waiting on either a Sigarda's aid or maybe Sram or Pure Steel Paladin to draw some cards. And of course a Pure Steel Paladin would also help us equip for free. So we've got some decent draw steps. Opponent with a fairy conclave, another fairy land here. But if they have another sprite, then they could counter a SRAM or a Pure Steel Paladin. It's going to be an opened armory instead. So I could search up a Flare Husk, for example. Let's see if they maybe pull the trigger on a Spell Soder Sprite here if we cast it. Since I would rather have the opened armory countered than a SRAM or a Pure Steel Paladin. Alright, resolves. Suppose we could also get a Spider Silk Net if we're afraid of Fairy Beatdown. Probably still leaning Flare Husk. Could also get a backup Colossus Hammer in case they counter the first one. And then I don't really want to trade Ink Moth for a Spell Sutter Sprite. And I'll still hang on to the Flare Husk, I think, in case we find Sram or Pure Steel. Opponent with a Fairy Seer. Alright, so Asper Fairies. And a Bitter Blossom to start generating even more Fairies. And the Sprite gets in for one. We'll take it. We'll cycle the Silent Clearing here. Finds Pure Steel Paladin. Alright, let's hope this resolves. It does. Alright. Let's start by playing the Flare Husk. Get Spell Pierced. Fair enough. Let's play the Shield. And uh, the Pure Steel gets pathed. Alright, well, they had all the answers. Opponent is down to zero cards, though. Get to search up another land, still have the Colossus Hammer in hand in case we find Sigarda's aid. But uh, yeah, all these flying tokens from the Bitter Blossom are going to be an issue. 
since now our opponent can just chum block forever. And they're gonna start beating down here. And gets in for four. Down to 15 we go. And we'll cycle another clearing. Which finds a spider silk net. Alright, so I could activate one of the Nexi here and then equip a Cathar shield onto it so it doesn't die to the Fairy Rogue. I guess that's reasonable. Opponent takes one Infect, up to two poison counters now. And we'll pass a turn. The Bitter Blossom will eventually kill our opponent, but uh, we're probably dying before that happens. As we see Changeling Outcast, so another fairy here, thanks to the Changeling ability. So they might also be playing some ninjas alongside all these fairies, who knows. Definitely gonna be a tough matchup, the combination of all these removal spells to get rid of our creatures, and then some disruption in the form of Spell Pierce and Sprite to counter our spells as well. And we find a Steel Shaper's Gifts, what can that possibly find that's useful? Probably not much, but I think we should still cast it, just to thin out the deck a little bit. And probably just get a second Colossus Hammer. I guess Bone Saw could also be relevant. And if we find Sram or Pure Steel, then uh, this can cantrip for free. Alright, I guess I'll get a Bone Saw. And then I guess we're attacking again. Since we can block with a Ink Moth Nexus that has more than one toughness, since the equipment will fall off end of turn. Now if we find any of our creatures, we can also equip it with the Spider Silk Net, so it gains reach, so we can block one of the opponent's creatures every turn. So finding a creature that's not an Ink Moth is a uh, step one, basically. Opponent also decide to Chum this time around. So we're basically facing a two-turn clock. It's also possible I should just trade off Ink Moth for Fairy Conclave. Opponent decides not to attack with it this turn. Just gets in for 4, puts us to 7, and yeah, next turn it could potentially have lethal, decides to keep back an extra Fairy Rogue, maybe fearing the double Ink Moth Nexus, plus maybe a Sigardos Aid and Colossus Hammer, sneaking in. So I'll just untap, and another open the Armory, which isn't too useful. So I guess I still get to attack with the Ink Moth Nexus, since it didn't attack with everyone last turn, and maybe force some Chum Blocks with the Fairy Rogues. And suppose we could also equip the Bone Saw onto it, just so it can take out multiple fairies if they do go for the triple block. Opponent takes two. Alright, so they're up to four, in fact. And on board we're only taking seven damage, so not quite lethal. Unless they flash in another spell setter sprite, and then we will be taking exactly eight. Alright, fair enough. So they had a pure seal and a SRAM covered anyway with the Spellsetter Sprite. So I don't think we had many outs. Conclave gets activated and we'll be dead. Alright, so thinking of sideboarding here, what can we bring in for this matchup? The main card I'm thinking of is probably the Faith Shield here to protect our creatures from removal. Don't think we need any Graveyard Hate and any Artifact or Enchantment Hate. I guess Fragmentize can take out a Bitter Blossom, but I don't think that's a game we're trying to play. Uh, it's a little bit too reactive, and Path also doesn't do a whole lot, so... I think Shield is the only real consideration. And then what do we take out? Open the Armory and the uh, Core Outfitter are kind of the weaker cards we can consider shaving if we need to take anything out of the main deck. But as it sits, I'm probably leaning to just take out one open and one outfitter and not uh, over signboard here. We'll be on the play and let's see, do we have a better hand this time? Well, we've got the duelist and a hammer and a faith shield to protect the duelist. All we're missing is again a way to equip the hammer for free. This time we do have three lands including a clearing so we can cycle it right away. So I think we're supposed to keep this hand. And I think I'm not going to play the Duelist turn 1, so it doesn't die to a Fatal Push or a Path if they play turn 1, although they're not super likely to push the Duelist on their first turn. So maybe it is still okay to play it out turn 1. Alright, so we'll run out the Duelist and then hope they don't Fatal Push it in their own turn. 
just a timed conclave from the opponents. Alright, so if at any point we find a Sigardos 8, we could win on the spot. Just a Cathar Shield for now. So I suppose I could equip the Bone Saw and attack for 4 damage here, it's probably reasonable. And then keep up uh, Faith Shields. And that's the reason why I like playing the full 4 copies of Bone Saw as opposed to more shields, is that sometimes just playing a Duelist and equipping it with a Bone Saw can get in quite a bit of damage. The reason to play the clearing last turn anyway is in case we draw a second clearing or an Ink Moth that we want to play instead. So maybe I was still supposed to play the clearing since taking one damage from casting Faith Shield is probably not relevant enough. Fairy Seer not a great blocker since the Duelist has Double Strike. Just the planes for now, so we'll cycle the clearing. I guess we'll do it just to see what we draw. If we draw another Bone Saw, for example, and yeah, there's the Sigarda's Aid. So I don't think I can tap out for it, since then uh, we're Shield Sound on Faith Shield. But if we wait, of course, then there's a risk of it getting Spell Setter Sprite countered, but I guess the same goes for Colossus Hammer. So yeah, let's just attack for four damage here. And then next turn, hopefully we can set up the combo. Looks like they have a Path to Exile, though. Yeah, we'll be forced to counter that with the Faith Shield, otherwise we don't have any creature for the combo. If we find a Steel Shaper's Gift, then we can just search up a Flare Husk to get more creatures. So we were very close to a turn to kill here, if we had drawn the aid sooner. Opponent decides to chum block with Fairy Seer, preserving their life total. 3 mana for a Kaya's Guile, forcing us to sacrifice a creature and make a 1-1 token. Alright, that's too bad. So there goes the Core Duelists. We'll need to find a backup creature now. And another Faith Shield would not have helped against the Kaya's Guile. So we'll just play the Sigardos Aid, and then we'll uh, have to wait here. At least now with Sigardos Aid in play, we can make it more difficult for the opponent to keep up counter spells. And we've got another removal spell covered with the shield. Opponent's gonna start beating down with the Spirit Token. Just the planes to draw. I think we'll still play it out. Not sure if there's any discard we need to worry about out of the opponent's deck. We're not under a ton of pressure here, just taking one damage. But of course, every turn that goes by is an extra opportunity for the opponent to draw into more disruption. A Mutavolt, another creature land here as we draw another planes. This is definitely a matchup where we wouldn't mind having even more of the Horizon lands, but can't play too many of them, otherwise we risk uh, drawing multiples against a burn deck. Still want to be playing the lands, I think, in case we find a Pure Steel or a Sram and start going off and need access to more mana. Second Mutavolt, so now a ton of creature lands for the opponent, which is going to speed up their clock significantly. Important to note that if we did find a Flare Husk, we could also play that at instant speed with the Sigarda's Aid. So we could kind of surprise the opponent with an end of turn Flare Husk and then untap and kill them. And a Changeling Outcast, another one mana creature here. Alright, more planes. Our draw saps have not been too kind to us so far. Keep playing it out. Don't have many planes left in the deck. But decks with a ton of interaction like the one our opponent is playing are probably not favorable matchups. We would much rather play against other decks that try and set up some combos since we can potentially kill turn 2, turn 3. So we can potentially be even faster than some of the other combo decks in Modern. Even if our deck is maybe not the epitome of consistency. So we're down to 9 life. And it's uh, make or break here. Silent clearing we can cycle. And the SRAM. Alright, let's hope this doesn't get countered. And it gets countered. Alright. So are we facing lethal next turn? Let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if our opponent wants to go for it, we're dead. And it looks like they're gonna be swinging for defenses here. Alright, GG's. Opponent with just the right amount of interaction to keep us from combing them. And we'll move on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and what about this hand? We've got basically all the pieces we need, just missing a basic planes or a wine producing land. Yeah, I think I'll keep. 
The Mox Opal can also make white mana, even if that means playing the other equipment first. Just lose out on a bit of SRAM value. And then we can uh, potentially play Aid, open the armory, can find a hammer. And we've got Strom maybe drawing us a few extra cards. Point with a turn one Aether Vial off an island, so probably Merfolk. Pure Steel Paladin the draw, that one's going to be a bit more difficult to cast. So I guess we're committed to just playing out these Bone Saws and uh, Spider Silk Nets. Alternatively, I can also activate the Ink Moth, which turns it into an artifact, which counts for Mox Opal, so I can save maybe one equipment in hand. I guess the plan is to cast the Open Armory to get a hammer, and then next turn I can Sigardos 8 and maybe play the hammer at instant speed. So I think I'm still fine running out to two equipment here. Get Colossus Hammer. So I won't quite be able to do it next turn since I need to both play Sigardos 8 and have the mana for Hammer. If we had some sort of Vigilance equipment on the Ink Moth, I could attack with it. It has Vigilance, and so it can also tap for mana to play the Hammer, but that's not the case here. Opponent takes up Vile, stuck on one land, there's a Plains. So I guess now I'll play Aid plus Sram, and then next turn we can try and go for it. Vial is going to tick up to 2, and plays another Vial. So there's not many interactive Merfolk they can Vial in here. And it looks like they're Vialing main phase for Thalia. Alright, never mind. I guess our points on humans and not Merfolk. That means our Colossus Hammer costs one more, but land means it doesn't matter. So I can animate Ink Moth. Attack, opponent can block. And then Hammer is uh, 11, in fact. Draw a card from Sram as well. And that should be lethal. Alright. So turn 3 kill here with Ink Moth. On to sideboarding against humans. So, uh, humans, there's some annoying cards they can play, Meddling Mage, Thalia, so probably won't pass Exile. Anything else in the sideboard, Fragmentize can take out Aether Vial, but it's too narrow. So I think just the four paths coming in, what do we take out? Usually just shave on the clunkier card, so Open Armory can go. And then I'll probably take out the two Outfitters as well. Seems reasonable. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand's reasonable, we're missing a hammer or a way to find a hammer. But uh, I think we can still probably keep this one perhaps a bit land-heavy, so if we don't draw any cycling lands we could flood out. But we've got a ton of good draws between SRAM, Pure Steel, Hammer, or Steel Shaper's Gift. And then the Evasive Ink Moth is also pretty key alongside Sigardus 8 to maybe fly over. It's gonna be a turn 1 Noble, and a path, not gonna path a Noble Harak. Just gonna play the Duelist for now. Second Cavern of Souls on Human. And Collector Oof. Alright, that's also a good answer to some of our artifact synergies. Do have the path to deal with it into a Champion of the Parish. And the Oof also doesn't stop the Sigardos 8 plan since that circumvents the activated ability. So I can play Sigardos Aid. And then attack with the Core Duelists, putting the Flare Husk on it. Can even play the Ink Moth, don't necessarily need to keep a Path Exile. Could have also played the Shield on the Duelist before attacking, so it has Vigilance and can also block on the way back. But I also want to keep some equipment in case we find a SRAM or Pure Steel to draw more cards, so I think this is a fine middle road. Attack with the Duelist and then just put the Husk on it. Opponent does block. Of course, if we had a hammer, they would be dead, so they're kind of forced to block in a way. And we'll pass a turn. Could be a Reflector Mage here, bouncing the Duelists. Deputy with Attention instead. Let's see what that uh, takes care of. Goes for the Duelist itself, fair enough. And Champion gets in for one. So far they haven't played many humans. An Oof and then a Vidalcan Wizard. So just a 2-2 attack thanks to Exalted. Silent Clearing, 
So probably just cycling that, keep a path. Find a SRAM. All right, so next turn we can play SRAM into shield and get something going. Opponent also drawing a lot of lands without being able to cycle them away. It looks like a Mantis Rider coming down. All right, so do we want to kill that here? We'll wait before the attack in case of Exalted. Keeps Deputy of Detention back. Yeah, it might be reasonable to kill the Mantis Rider just to buy ourselves more time. They're down to zero cards in hand, so yeah, I think I'll kill the Mantis Rider here. See if they have another basic land. They might only have the one island. Maybe they have a planes too. They have the planes as well, so we'll take two. No Exalted this time since we waited for them to attack. I guess I'll place Ram into shield, tapping the Ink Moth in case we draw another useful land. And then we can equip the Sram right away thanks to the Sigardos aid. And I'll uh, run out the Bone Saw as well in case we draw something useful that we want to cast right now. And our opponent concedes. All right, maybe a bit of a premature concession, but we were probably favored to win this one. That's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.